stay solid while these hate niggas. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Miles Xavier. Yes, sir. We I think uh, we've been recording for what well, must be two hours now. Something like that. Something like that. But that's how you're supposed to do it, man. Get nice and comfortable. Let the vibe settle in. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree. I agree. And what I like most about it is that it's another it's another day of the week where I get to sit down and do my absolute favorite thing of my week is speak to you, my brother. This, to me, is still so exciting. And, and, and I'm truly fortunate to be able to, to share this time with you. Uh, the gratitude is more than mutual. You know that. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for the people too. What up, Lot Nation? Um, but this this space is this space is important, man. How you feeling coming in here today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Um, I think it's important to be able to note out that today is our 30th episode. Can we get some gunshots right. or oh? That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> I feel like we said it an episode or two back, but it's hard to do anything 30 sometimes to feel good about it. So one time for us real quick. So, the big 3-0. The big 3-0. So this is a big one for us, man. So I'm coming into this super excited about the fact that it's been 30 consecutive weeks of putting this content out. Yeah, man. I, I appreciate you uh, coming to this space, you know, being relatively on time but it's, it's it's hard to work something like that into your schedule as as you mentioned earlier sometimes we can get uh quite liberal with uh you know the time that we spend in pre-production um but that's uh, that's important you know it's it's time you enjoy spending is, is never wasted and i appreciate this space i appreciate you for bringing your energy you know i know you're a busy man so just even being here i appreciate that uh, i appreciate your vision for this space and what it could be um and I appreciate anybody who's listening. It's 30 times of listening to anything, especially two people talk. Yeah, uh, yeah. Me, that's, 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 a, that's a beautiful thing right there if anybody's rocking with us like that, like that. So uh, shout out to y'all too, man. Indeed. Indeed. And it turns out that this, uh, this month we had close to 60 views, which means that, uh, you know, every episode at least got some bit of a watch. And to start this off with zero views and move it all the way up to 60, we all about small small accomplishments so i'll take you know on episode 30 counting that up i'll take a i'll take a nod for that why not yeah and 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 as the qualitative is important always addressing the numbers you know what i'm saying but the other thing is too just hearing people want to be a part of the conversation people you know even hitting my phone to say you should have said this during this part and it's like oh so you you wanted to be there you know i wish you had been there to contribute but i'm glad you was there listening you know what i'm saying um, so that's that's heartwarming to me, and I appreciate everybody who uh, you know has reached out and 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 participated in in whatever way, liking, commenting, subscribing, or just getting on my ass and my phone for the people that's close for the for the for real friends of the show. It's all love. That's what's up. Indeed, indeed, and the reason the friends of the show actually enjoy the show, Miles and Xavier, is because every week we bring them carefully curated content for their cranium. We do this on a weekly basic is is we put it together intentionally for their audio pleasures and the way that we break that down on this show is into three different parts the first part being stumble upon now on stumble upon this is where me and miles discuss all the things thoughts and interesting things that have kind of passed through our week these are these could be anywhere from uh you know it, it is whatever it is whatever it is and this today's particular episode we have stumbled on <laughs> I don't have my glasses and I was trying to be slick about it as I was reading it and I realized that I'm, I'm like quite a bad thing. Whole, what does that say there? What is that? Boy, Dude, come in I, here. What does that say right there? Printing this print all small. That's my handwriting. I don't know when I wrote this. It was messed up, man. Read that. What that <laughs> that's, that's definitely what's going on right now. And if you would read what was on this page, you would see that on uh, today's episode of Stumble Upon Man, we want to just bring up to you guys uh, that we're going to be taking two weeks off of the show uh, for, for... That's right. We're breaking up. JVP style. That's it. <laughs> we had a good run. <laughs> Contrary to uh, other thoughts, we're not... My ego took over up. the show. <laughs> you would be the reason we been... break up. I will, I'm determined to be. Me and my diva ways. I broke us up. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, yeah, the yeah. fan has been thinking about it for a while. That's right. <laughs> it's the fa- the fans were on top of it. Yes, there has been some internal friction between me and Miles Xavier, so we're gonna go duke it out for two weeks and hopefully be able to get back on the same page. Big facts, big facts. But all all kidding aside, we appreciate everybody that's rocking with us. Just trying to keep y'all informed. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna take a minute. Um, a, a phrase my brother used to describe the scenario. I think it fits to perfectly is we've been real nose to canvas. Just we've been, this has been an experiment of us kicking it into gear, meeting every week, uh, sitting down with what's going on in the world and trying to break it down. And I love doing it. Um, I'll just speak for that on my part, but uh, yeah, I think, I think it will, it'll be good to maximize what this can be and, and, and our creativity to just take a look at what we've done so far. Um, and then as we always do jump back in and double down. So We'll, we'll miss you, but uh, don't don't go too far. Hey, man, and before they even leave, we still got more content for them, and that content then goes into Current News. Now, on Current News, this is where we reach for the absolute top of what is hot and important in news media. And unfortunately, this week, we're brought again to be able to discuss something that happens entirely too often, something that we've discussed before, but something that continues to happen. The police are shooting and killing Black people. Again. Yeah, it's the. Uh, I think an interesting part of that conversation. Oh, see, I work in I work in violence prevention, so that that <laughs> notification is uh is definitely related to the conversation. But um, see, the thing is that police violence, right, has been uh, a through line of of the black experience in America, right? Uh, you know, crime rates within. Black communities and in areas where Black people live have gone up and down, um, but uh, our relationship with the police has never been good, um, and that has a lot to do with where the police originated. But um, we're here again, and I think we'll be we'll try and be intentional about having the conversation in a way that uh, acknowledges how many times we've already had it. Yeah, yeah, and and that might be the conversation to have on its own. But before even um, after that, at least, what we have is the last portion of the show, which is recommended and review. Now, on recommended and review, can you please, Miles, tell the people why this is our favorite part of the show? I love recommended and review because we get to interact with you. Get to interact with you. You know what I'm saying? We review what you recommend. We recommend what you should view. You know, it's amazing. It's a beautiful relationship. I appreciate y'all. This week, what are we getting into this week? This week, we're going to be getting into virtual concerts. Jake and Logan, uh, Jake and Logan Paul, Logan Paul and Ben Askren. They fought on Triller, which I think was the most fantastic live virtual performance I've ever seen. We're going to get into that. And if we're being honest, Miles, there was actually another topic that was presented to us, but we're clearly too scared to be able to approach that one. So we will sidestep the actual recommended conversation that we have in acknowledgement of us being too scared to touch it. Brain check. Mm-hmm. Brain check. Brain check. We'll get back to it. Yeah. We will get back to it. Yeah. And there was a side part of that conversation that we also had with that reviewer. So we're going to get into everything. Dig me. If, if I knew how to edit the bleep button, this is where I would say exactly what that is. But... We're still a family show for the most part. (laughs) And starting this show off, we're going straight into Stumble Upon with our future plans and the two-week break that we're going to be taking. No, we're not breaking up. In fact, it is for the sake of the quality of the show. Um, We've been 30 30 weeks straight in a row. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, and for us, as Miles was saying, is is a opportunity to be able to plan some of this other interesting content that we have for you guys. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, creative things that we want to be able to express and to be able to share. And these two weeks for you know two weeks is a short time when you actually think about it, but they're going to give us the ability to be able to focus more on increasing the quality and the type of content that you guys are going to be getting. So. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a time off, but definitely also a time on still. Yeah. And if you're hearing this and you give a shit, that's awesome. Like, this is also an amazing time to tell us, like, what you think and, and 
how you feel and what we could add and what would make you want to keep listening. Um, what would make you want to invite your friends? So this is for sure to be continued. Um, I'm excited about like actually being active, actively actionable as if there weren't enough A's in that sense uh, to be like about some of the things that I want to incorporate. You know, there's ideas that I've had that you've had that we've been meaning to, to make happen. And when it's, you know, sprinting to the, to the computer on, on Sunday, just to have the time to get the show done. Um, it's tough to, to make everything that we want to see happen, happen. So it'll be good to play a little bit of catch up, do a little bit of planning and, and come back uh, ready to, as champions, as champions, we're taking over the pod game. You know what I'm saying? After this, it's no, we're taking off. Watch. Indeed, indeed. And part of part of what we're going to be doing in the upcoming uh, months, because we are people that believe in speaking things into reality, is doing a Euro trip. And then on this Euro trip, being able to meet with some interesting creatives and, and, and the sorts we've already reached out to, let's say, two people, one, two people who would be very interested in being able to host us with this. Uh, you know, it's all part of, again, as we say, some of the, the diversified different type of content that we're going to be bringing in. So if you know any creatives that are in the Euro region that are dope with film photography or have a studio, or have a five place or are just cool people, um, let us know. We'd love to be able to meet up with them, talk with them and create some fire, carefully curated content for Ukrainian. I was going to collaborate and throw that in there too. You beat me to it. Beat me mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. Collaborate on the curated content from different continents. You know what I'm saying? It's a constant. What we do. Don't be a cunt about it. <laughs> Don't be a wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's Somebody's after ready for the Euro trip for sure. <laughs> 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 Dang. That is so sad <laughs> that that is getting cut. <laughs> that is so sad. But uh, yeah, but honestly, I think it's going to be dope. You know, Maz, I think there's a lot of space for us to um, just bring this, this, this young black conversation into some international spaces. And for us, if we're being very, very honest, and I'll say it, you know, in confidence, of course, is that we've always just always wanted to create a platform that allows us to get paid doing exactly what we love, which is having dope conversations around the world. So um, this is a step into that, but everything leads back into making sure that we're delivering the best type of conversations that we can with the most interesting type of people in the most interesting spaces as well. So it's, it's, um, it's the journey towards that. And anybody that is rocking with us up until now and is, is been supportive and, and whatnot, it's, 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 it's it's that is a lot of the fuel that's allowing us to push forward so shout out to to all of that uh we're gonna take a little spring break you know what i yeah. mean but when we get back it's summertime baby indeed some podcast is different you know what i'm saying it's going miles is gonna different. be in the miles is gonna be shirtless it's gonna be wild i'm gonna be giving y'all live feedback from the streets streets gonna be crazy this summer so mm -hmm. we're going to have to build in a segment to talk about what discreet, what's happening in the streets. Because I have a feeling it's going to be different. You're starting an OnlyFans? It's going to be different. Hey, man, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to be out there with all the, with everybody who got one already, for sure. <laughs> guilty, guilty by association, I hope. <laughs> guilty by association, I hope. Oh, man. All right, Miles. Um, if, if, Safely, if, though. Get vaccinated. If if we push past, um, if we push past that, um, I'm trying to think uh, because there there's still a conversation to be had. I think about what 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 space creative outlets have for people in general in today's day and age, right? Like in a, in a time where we're also consumed with social media and everything is so digital and and uh, career driven and the man and getting into just just falling into the the routine of just regular life having a creative outlet i think is extremely important just for self-expression i agree i agree i think there's a few like staples of your life that 
it's less important what they look like and what they are than that you have them. And one of them is a way to take care of your body. So whether that's actually going to the gym and working out, or if that's just going on runs or walks or, you know, walking your dog or whatever, something that you regularly do to get outside, get some type of exercise, um, some type of regulation in your diet. So I don't care if you're keto, vegan, pescatarian, some type of something that makes you pay attention to what you're putting in your body. Um, and yeah, I think it's important to have a, a space to express yourself, right? And expression doesn't always have to have an audience. And I think that's something that, that gets lost uh, in this like age of comparison with social media where everybody posts their achievements and accolades online is people feel like something isn't worth anything unless it trans unless you can take a picture of it and put it on your Instagram and it translates into this uh, virtual validation. And so I, I would just like to emphasize that I think it's important to express yourself and important to realize that all of that expression doesn't necessarily need to have an audience, yeah. right? There's, you can, you can write and journal, right? You can sing in the shower, right? Like allow yourself to do that and find those informal ways of expressing yourself. Cause I think that's good for you too. Um, as well as anything that you do, that's if you, if you do do something visual art that you see people posting and you feel inclined, but you're not sure for sure, do it for sure. Yeah. Post that stuff, but recognize that, that art is equally valid and as if the process of it means something to you and and if it makes you happy whether or not you share it and and i, I like what you said about exp expression doesn't need to have a a audience right it, because a lot of times i think what trips people up and what tripped us first is how is this going to be received how are people going to take it and that can hold you back from being able to just dive into things because now you're thinking, um, will I look like an idiot? Or am I going to look like a fool? Or how is this, you know, how are people going to be able to respond to it? But the actual, the art in, the art is in the attempt, right? The, how the, whatever the end product is, that is subjective, you know, art is always going to be subjective, but the art is in the process of, of doing it, which is another, uh, another phrase that, that that you helped coin as well which is the art of the process yeah man it's it's if you if you there have been a lot of projects a lot of parts of my life that have been so useful to me and where i've learned a lot of lessons where the end project or product wasn't all that great you know what i mean and and or at least at least to at least to me or how i see it now maybe it was great for the moment but it's far less important less important than what i learned from the process of, mm. of creating it whether that was a a paper that i was really trying hard on in school or you know uh, a personal endeavor uh some type of music thing and you you grow and, and you don't have to leave that behind if you don't necessarily love what comes out of it right and I, and the other thing the last thing i wanted to just add is that that audience maybe like you don't have to decide whether something has an audience now or when you're creating it, right? You can create something and hold it for a while and allow yourself to be the audience. Study how you've grown later. Allow, you can, you can create something that's only for your kids or only for yeah. the people in your family, right? Um, I feel like, again, we're encouraged to put it out there and get as many likes as possible to understand the value of things. Uh, but likes ain't, likes ain't currency. Currency is hardly even currency if you really know what I'm talking about. Ooh, we're getting deep on them. We're getting deep on them. Big facts. I feel like we're not moving into current news yet, but I feel like I need to hit them with the. Oh, I like how you did that. You caught that wave to get us into the current news. The current news. Now, yes, sir. We're gonna Before have to we get there, I just. No, I didn't want to rush you off in case you had anything else you wanted to add about that last topic. Um. Not nah, be you, you're you're extremely right about likes not necessarily being the validator, but it's very difficult in today's day and age when you realize just how how intentional likes are to be able to play on our on our emotions and and on our habits. You know the reality of the reality of um, digital addiction is real. You know digital addiction is a real thing. Even the manner in which you scroll 
for refreshing pages? Why is it that you scroll down instead of scrolling up to refresh pages? That's similar to Vegas. Why is in Vegas you pull down the levy instead of pulling the, pushing the levy up when you on the slots? It's that same psychology. It's all very intentful. It's all very, um, it's it's all meant to be able to 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 get as much time out of you. And what you sacrifice in that is your sanity at times, is emotional balance, is your reception to uh, you know, being vulnerable to, to, to this algorithm really. So yeah, it, it, I, I, I would hope with, I would hope with things such as YouTube, with things such as Instagram, everybody now can have at least a platform to be, to be creative and feel confident that like, dude, honestly, probably not anybody's watching what you're doing or truly cares <laughs> you know so it, that that's that's a that's always reassuring if you're too scared it's like at the end of the day people don't care that much even yeah, you'll have to try to get people to watch yeah. you have to try yeah so if, you, if you're worried about just putting it up there what people will think start start by just uploading it and you'll be fine i promise yeah <laughs> Before we move on to current news, I just wanted to ask you if there's any creative outlets that you have maybe that the people might not know about, right, outside of this, uh, you know, just to make anybody else feel seen. I don't know. Oh, you're trying to get me jammed up. I... <laughs> sure. <laughs> trying to I, get me jammed up. Not me. Not I. Not I would I ever try to incriminate you. I just, I just was asking if you have any... <laughs> Other hobbies are creative outlets. What uh nah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else. Yeah, word, word. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on, dude. Hit the hit the I like to cook. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Word, word, word. <laughs> um, a creative outlet uh, <laughs> is uh <laughs> the cooking thing I think we 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 share a, a a like for cooking. You know, me and you we both enjoy cooking. Um <laughs> Uh, uh, horticulture for me, horticulture. I grow uh, fantastic marijuana, this is my <laughs> skill. <laughs> That's awesome. Are the plants behind you real? So, you see, the thing about Damn, I what wasn't happens, <laughs> the thing about what's that happening, like a setup. <laughs> you see, uh, the thing about colonization, Miles, is that <laughs> the legacies. <Yeah. laughs> One day we're going to have to have a conversation of what it's like to be in a scenario with your friend where even you feel like, dang, this looks like a setup. <laughs> it looks like I set you up. It does feel like you set me up. I did not mean to set you up. I didn't mean to. No, but no, this but is a creative that's... outlet. Yeah, this is for sure a creative outlet. And so is, so is horticulture, right? Just growing things, growing plants. Even just since moving plants and stuff into to my apartment, I feel better. It's nice to have another living thing. That's that's pretty low maintenance, right? Just give it some water and it's straight. Take some yeah. care of it. Um, get it some light. So that's awesome, man. I think I think that's that's all I wanted was just to express just any anything, whatever it is. You know, people might hear that and go, "Oh shit, I love to grow. I grow chilies in my windowsill or little mm -hmm. tomatoes or something like that." And that's you know that makes me happy. They dig it. They they feel seen. So that's yeah. The, and that is a creative outlet because you have to like literally create something that's not there. It's like the process of creation, and you know, is is doing that. And actually, Miles, um, very recently, I only started realizing that my passion in business is the art of the the. It's a creative. It's a creative pursuit, even in even in business, right? It's being able to create something that doesn't exist from you know, create things that don't exist. That's, that's creation and taking it as an art, understanding the patterns that work, understanding the systems that, 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 that make it functional and then being able to step back and admire it as a, uh, and admire it as, as a, as a creative, um, let's say business work of art. And I think that, I think that ability to be able to, or let me say, being able to find the creative, the creativity in what you're doing can open up a lot of space for it to be fun because that's what's working for me, seeing it as that endeavor. So my pursuits are those of a creative pursuit more so as they are a uh, business pursuit or a, a monetary pursuit. It's, it's, it's the creative capability of it. You're an Imagineer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. 
<laughs> you know? But no, I think that's really important, right? To be able to find creativity, whether it's in entrepreneurship, right? Whether it's in whatever your thing is, you know, finding a way to, whether it's creating playlists, right? On your Spotify, whether it's, you know, reading and sharing books with other people, whether it's gifting, you know, I'm blessed to have some amazing people in my life that love to give people little gifts. And that's just, that's just part of who they are, writing people letters and notes. Mm -hmm. So all of that stuff, man, find ways to express yourself and, and share it if you want. Um, but, but grow and learn from it for sure. Yeah. And hobbies too. Like, I think that's, what's made things fun is being able to pick up hobbies of, I'm trying to learn how to DJ. I've seen you DJ. So, you know, I, that looks like a, a lot of fun. So trying to learn that, just picking up various different hobbies and keep it pushing. Yeah, for sure. It's really interesting to see my pops as somebody who recently retired, start to find himself just by, you know, picking up hobbies and, and putting them down. And as beautiful as it is to see that that manifest in somebody who's older and to see their, uh, like, it's interesting talking to him now, man. It's this huge difference from when he was actually working. You can see the gears turning in his head, like, at a, at a, at the same time faster, but more, like, peaceful speed. You know what I mean? You can tell that he's, he's not sure what he wants to do with all of his time, but he's been spending a lot of time with his thoughts, and it shows in, like, the clarity of how he expresses himself. Uh, and I just think that that's awesome, man. Just even thinking about what you want to do, who you want to be, is is it helps your it helps your mental health, I think. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's amazing to see what people do just with the freedom of thinking about, just really being intentional about how they spend their time and what makes them happy and satisfies them. Yeah, and it shows that like that journey of self discovery doesn't ever really end. It's it's continuous and it's exactly that a journey up until you die you know there, there's no point in it where it it's all the way clicking there's always so much more to be discovered of yourself by the virtue of how many different lives you can just live on this earth alone you know dude there are people who are busy spearfishing in alaska you know in 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 holes in the floor and that is their life that exists now as we're speaking you know what I mean? Like that is a whole different reality to some, if to, to a certain extent, like if to somebody that has never even thought about that or has seen that, that is a different universe. Yeah, for sure. And there's so much of that out there and you can explore that through books. You can explore that through travel. You know what I mean? There's, it's, there's so much outside of what we know that might make us happy. And so that that's the beauty of the process of, of exploration is even if you even if you don't have to be you don't have to feel like something's missing. You don't feel you have to be trying to fill a void. Right. But there is just so much out there. Mm. Right. And then and it seems like, you know, every time you walk out of your of your door with the intention to experience something new, you're not always going to have a good time, but you'll always have the opportunity to learn. I like that, the opportunity to learn. Getting into, getting into current news, Miles, we're, we're diving into a conversation that we've had before. Um, there's a few. I'm not, Too I'm many. Not yeah, I'm not sure how you want to take it. Too many. I think it's important to just exactly the way you started it is that we've had this conversation many times, right? Um, in the United States, the police have more than a habit, right? Are, are systemically inclined to kill black people, people of color, right? Um, and it's resulted in the, a variety of cases that we're, that we're looking at over the past couple of weeks. Um, I know that weighs on me as a black man I know it weighs on my mom as somebody who worries about a black man. Uh, and first and foremost, like just love and lifting up the families of the people that we've lost. Um, but can it's we, too can many. We, can we acknowledge them by giving out 
um, their names and some and some news headlines just regarding the specifics of who we're talking about and the and the uh, events that have been and, and let's say the, the particular murders that have been um, the, that have been prominent in in the U.S. over these last few weeks in the news space. Yeah. So I'll start with um, I'll start with just by acknowledging that. Uh, the Derek Chauvin trial is continuing here in the States. It just went to closing arguments, which means both the prosecution and the defense have rested their cases as far as presenting evidence to the jury. Um, it's been about two weeks, two and a half weeks as far as the trial. Um, so rest in peace to George Floyd. Uh, I think the first thing to say about that is that people aren't, I don't even feel like people are watching the trial so much as just waiting to see whether they, it confirms our lack of trust in the justice system. So rest in peace to George Floyd. Um, so some of the more recent stories, Dante Wright, who is a father uh, and a baseball player and a 20 year old, I believe. Um, he was He's shot. kid. Yeah, he was a kid. He was a kid. Pretty he was okay. shot during a traffic stop, um, initiated for uh, uh, an air freshener in his in his window, and that escalated because they he he had warrants, um, and because of the officer's aggression towards him, and an officer said claims that she meant to tase him but ended up pulling her firearm from her opposite hip uh and shooting and killing him so rest in peace to dante wright um shout out to his family too uh then there's adam toledo who is a 13 year old uh boy from chicago who was killed by the police after uh, they were alerted that he had a weapon. Uh, he ran down an alley, tossed the gun, put his hands up, and was shot by the police. So, uh, I mean... And there's videos of both of this, you know, both of these. There's videos that are out there, and it's kind of gruesome to be able to watch these videos. You know, if I'm being honest, I don't, I don't even watch them anymore. I, I don't even watch them anymore. Yeah. Big facts. Uh, I think it's important to just call out that, like, yo, as people of color, there's no, you don't have to subject yourself to that, right? Like, if you you feel like you want to know what's going on, like, that's cool, that's what, that's fine, but like, you don't don't feel like you have to watch this video, subject yourself to that trauma, um, because you don't, right? The mm -hmm. details will come out. You can continue to educate yourself and follow the story, um, because that stuff is hard to watch and that's messed up. So don't feel like you have to watch that. And the last story that I just wanted to acknowledge, thank God this man is still alive. Um, yeah. Uh, Army Lieutenant Karen Nazario, Caron, sorry if I'm saying his name wrong. Um, he was stopped by the police and pepper sprayed, right? Um, a video of that was released as well. And basically in watching the video, there was no reason for them to have to pepper spray this man. It demonstrated yeah. uh, further what we've seen in these other cases that has escalated into death, just an inability to de-escalate a situation, right? Um, so thank God that that man is still, that event is okay, though traumatized, for, I'm sure, from having been stopped and then yeah. assaulted by the police. Uh, so the, 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 the thing, the, the main issue here is that one safety, these people clearly weren't made safe by the police. Their lives were taken and we've lost people, period. That's too many, too many people. And the other thing is accountability. So at what point do the police get held accountable and does society feel confident in the way that the police will be held accountable for these different acts of violence on citizens. When we pay the police to do their job, we pay the police to do too many jobs. You know, for real. 
sometimes miles i get to a point where i i even myself doubt whether the what how the police kill black people is systemic you know because it's such a foreign it's such a wide thing to be able to accept as a reality that uh, a system that is meant to protect people and for the greater part of it just p- based on pure statistics regarding how many white people are in the US versus how many people of color there are in the US the police are policing white places better than they are policing black places in the sense that the, the there's a there's a the larger population the, a larger pop portion of the population believes is is, in, is engaging with this system in a way that's beneficial to them so the concept that it is absolutely the 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 converse of that is a hard mental leap to be able to make but like when you step back and you ask yourself if this kid didn't die and this officer had uh, did the same thing pulled uh, their weapon out and shot him dead or and shot him but he didn't die would that be news would she be even punished for that would that be something that even has any sort of ramification on her or would that be swept under the rug and for anybody that says that that wouldn't be swept under the rug clearly they do not understand the 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 level of 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 assault that just happens pure assault that just happens on people of color from the police reported assault from the people of color on recorded like it's it, you know it's it's very difficult it's very difficult to see this because it validates again your insignificance as as a human on that on in in the US you know it, it really does and something my mother used to say is that she would not it would be hard for her to go to sleep knowing that i was there you know she would say that she would it was hard for her to go to sleep when i when i was uh you know every time i was in the 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 US so it's it's a, it's a real terrorism dude it's a real terrorism yeah. it's it's a burden that all black people carry and the the thing is that it's built it's built the root of it is society people have been socialized right all of us have been socialized in a in a society that is white supremacist right so the basic function of that is black people are less than right and when, as soon as somebody is less than you can justify criminalizing all of their behavior you can justify using an amount of force against them that you wouldn't use against anybody else you can justify your fear right because everybody else has been socialized to believe the same thing everybody else has been taught to be scared of black men especially right that that we're criminals that we want to rob you right that we you know that we're all poor that you know we're on drugs right mm. you can see it you can see how that teaching and that coding right through storytelling books media uh who gets to be in political office right like who controls systems of government who like who we lift up as heroes who stories get told the way history is written is all compounding and it's all creates a subconscious where it's much easier to feel like you're justified to kill a black person than you are a white person and not only cops are subjected to that but cops are not trained enough to or or, or not subjected to any type of experience that would overcome that initial uh prejudice they're not whatever this sensitivity training the shit don't work right yeah. nothing that they've experienced has overcome that internal prejudice because the society we're raised in hasn't acknowledged that internal prejudice to the extent enough to address it to stop socializing people to to put white people at the top and people of color at the bottom yeah. right and you give them all goods <laughs> you give all these people that you've taught to be scared of black people guns and then you put them in black neighborhoods to patrol it you have them respond to calls right where there's a black person going through something something yeah. i heard in the trial of Derek Chauvin over and over is the police don't interact with you on your best day right that's not what the police often are engaging with people 
And so yeah. when you're already socialized to think less of this person, to see them as less human, to see them as more prone to violence, more prone to be on drugs, more prone to be a threat to your life, then of course what's happening is going to happen. Of yeah. course, unless you address that. That's playing, that's playing cause and effect over there. That's playing cause and effect. And the, I guess the controversial question is, uh, is it defund the police or is it increased police training? Because you would assume that increasing police funding uh, for training would then allow them to be able to dedicate more time into doing these de-escalation trainings and whatnot. But on the other side of that argument, you have them saying that um, there already is a significant amount of money that's already moving towards the police. And um, even a fraction of that money would be able to help communities in ways where they could then address some of the fundamental issues regarding what does lead to um, an environment that that can, you know, engage that can that can foster this type of relationship with authority. Yeah, I mean, police departments around the country have had millions of dollars poured into them and often that that's been used to weaponize the police right to increase their ability to use force so when it comes to the question of does that mean train police better or defund the police both and right yeah uh one uh, an activist in chicago that i that i look up to a lot damon williams um had a post that said uh when i look at the police i see a hundred other jobs stuffed into one thing with a gun right yeah. and nice. so redistribute all of those other jobs and allocate money for those other jobs and who's left in the sense of the police as we think of the police because they let me break it to you let me tell you something crazy they're not crime stoppers <laughs> they're not stopping crime they're crime responders right yeah. and <laughs> investigators sometimes solvers no nah. they're crime responders right so <laughs> The few people that are left to actively respond to crimes when they're happening, which is a small part of what the police do, and that need to be armed to do so should be specially trained, especially to recognize that, yes, you do have, you've been born, raised in a country that has yeah. ingrained implicit biases against Black people. When you encounter Black people, understand that those biases are happening, and we need to address that in a more, in a more direct way. Yeah. Right. So both both and defund and professionalize the police and maybe call them something else because that shit is we're done with that. But like, you know what I mean? It should be a very small segment of people that are armed responders to crimes that we think are active. It should be yeah. an entirely different person, probably not with a firearm that responds mm -hmm. to a mental health call. If my cousin has mental health issues and they're experiencing a mental health challenge and I need somebody to call and come and help me take care of them, help yeah. me like sedate them, that person should not be armed with a firearm to kill yeah. them. You know what I mean? Like it should be a different, hundred different jobs stuffed into one thing with a gun. I like that. I like that. I like that. I think, I think we've, I, I, I'm sadly, I don't think this is the last time we're going to be speaking about this. I think this is clearly something that's going to continue to happen. Um, what, I, what I do like, though, is that um, I've seen some resignations already. Um, I've seen some people quitting uh, regarding some of the police that have been responding to uh, their colleagues being fired and whatever the case is. And for me, that's you know, I think um, uh, progress happens in, in, in change happens in increments. Um, and so even the fact that we can see this sort of thing happen and them losing their jobs, even though that is such a minor um, repercussion for such a, uh, for such a villainous act, um, it's, still, it's still a repercussion nonetheless. And so uh, that, that we can count as, as, as a step forward of some sort, uh, but still keep our eyes focused on being able to ensure that from a systemic level that there's accountability that's held for the uh, accountability held for each of the people that that all of the police that behave in this manner all of all of these badly trained police get them off the street word mm. and the final note that i want to leave on this is that yeah as you alluded to right we'll be here again right I, not enough is being done to to prevent this from happening again. And so to anybody who is out there listening, wondering if they want to contribute or 
you know, wondering how they can contribute. Um, like thinking about, oh, you know, I really wanted to to do something. I wish I had protested when the George Floyd thing was happening and everybody was out there. I feel like I, I wanted to get involved, but I didn't know how. Um, this is an ongoing issue. So at this moment, when it felt like before the, the Derek Chauvin trial, we were losing a little bit of steam for the Black Lives Matter movement, yeah. right? Um, this is a reminder that that fight isn't going anywhere. Uh, and so you shouldn't either, right? Yeah. And it will rise and fall in terms of being trendy, but it is something that does need to change. And we're not going to stop having to deal with it until enough of us collectively address it. So, you, yeah, you late, but plenty shit of time. ain't over. <laughs> you yeah, late, but plenty of time. time. You ain't late, but plenty of time. Big oh, facts. man. Nah, that's dope. Um, let's move on to, sir, the final portion of the show, which is recommended and reviewed. When we in a rap with you. That's right. When we come back in two weeks, I'm having uh, riffs for all the intros. Yeah, like, actually, actually, we actually need to do that. Something, something. Listen, have you been, have you done a virtual concert yet? I have not done a virtual, I, I, I watched the, the, the Logan Paul and Ben Askren, uh, and Ben Askren fight, which was as close to a virtual concert. But I, then again, even that, I didn't watch the whole thing. I watched it just like in minutes, um, but it looked fantastic. What do you mean it looked fantastic? They threw a lot of money behind that. There was they threw a lot of money. The lineup there was in in there was exactly six minutes of fighting and then followed by two hours of entertainment before the next fight. So six minutes of fighting, two hours of entertainment before the next fight. Uh, they had Jack Harlow, Pete Davidson. It, it was just it was just stacked. Well, which of those experiences was better, the fight or the entertainment? I did not watch enough of the entertainment to be able to say, like, specifically, if I'm being honest. But what I did see was the lineup of people that were performing. And it was what you would call whoever's popping right now outside of Travis Scott. But in the place of Travis Scott, that Justin Bieber, which is like the white people, Travis Scott. Accurate. Accurate. <laughs> you feel me? So, man, uh, did you check? Did you get any of the performance? Did you get a Did you get a sense of it at all, or no? You just watched the fight and dipped out. I, I watched I watched a little bit of the Bieber fight, uh, of the Bieber performance, which was live, and then I know some were pre-recorded, and then some were were performed live at that at the at the arena. But it was it was for the most part the show is the show. The fight is not the show. The show is the show. Is what I walked away from that. Is thinking that's what I walked away thinking. Gotcha. The entire gotcha. experience is the is the show. It's not just um it's not just a fight. Yeah. So for my part, and referencing something some some of the folks on the US might have seen, the US uh the weekend performed at the Super Bowl. Mm. And it was, you know, what I imagine from a pop standpoint, a lot of virtual concerts would aim to be. Um you know, it was it was flashy, lots of different camera angles and cutting, lots of him running to different environments and and uh, yeah, with different different types of backdrops and platforms and stuff like that. So it was it was it was really interesting. Um, but I gotta say, it works less for me uh, with that type of music, with pop music, right? With yeah. music that I feel like, I mean, it's it's not my go to anyway but i feel like uh there's certain types of music you have to be around people to enjoy to really let, catch the energy and let it hit um and and i don't even think that that's like genre specific i think artists even have like within their catalog a lot of the records that would have been reserved for the clubs and reserved for festivals and stuff like that aren't necessarily the shows i want to see or the songs i want to see on a virtual stream I might want to get deeper in your catalog, get to know you a little bit better. If I'm not feeling that energy of a more mm. up-tempo, more like of a party record vibe, you know what I mean? Mm. So 
Um, and I think all of that stems from the one, the virtual concert that I've seen uh, that I thought was really dope was Toby Nguewe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did you pronounce that last name correctly? I'm not sure. Do you do you have a do you have a contesting way of pronunciation? I'm not gonna embarrass myself like that right now. All right. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Oh, I noticed you did cut out that part of uh, <laughs> that part last episode. <laughs> Toby. Uh, Toby <laughs> in. My brother Toby <laughs> in. Uh, but so so Toby Nguyen's uh. Houston live performance yeah yeah and his he did a he did a live performance with his family um and it was super dope man it was it was really dope it wasn't it was one it was a stage that was like kind of set up like a house kind of looking area and he just mm-hmm. kind of moved around it a little bit but he did a lot of talking he did a lot of uh talking about his music talking about his family talking about you know the world and and not every artist can do that, right? Some artists got to just get on stage and, you know, just perform, perform, yeah. perform. But this really shown as an example of like, all right, if you're going to do a virtual stream, you know, you're losing the ability to to hype people up in the same way because yeah. your presence isn't there. But what you can do is be intentional about sharing more of yourself and more about the music. Yeah. Um and he did that really, he did that really well. So I think that's yeah. going to characterize how I pick what virtual platforms and performances work for me. Um, but I think the biggest example is Versus. And how does that kind of fit into that, this whole arena now that it's moved to Triller, the same place you watched that fight and performance? It, it seems to me that Triller very quickly is trying to assert themselves as the, as the, the place to be for virtual performances just by the sheer ability for them to throw a bag at everything that they're doing um the 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 quality was high um you know the fight was a little bit corny given who was there but it was a spectacle nonetheless um but yeah man uh there's so much room for people to be creative when it comes to these virtual concerts i think going forward we just see this becoming a an integration into how we consume that type of entertainment where we're going to get some virtual performances and then we're going to get some live performances and you know people can be a lot more experimental with the with their virtual performances it would be dope to see what someone like you know kdot does with with the with the virtual performance what does that look like i'm almost ready to say that kendrick's not a rapper anymore i'm almost ready to be like all right, Kendrick's a retired rapper for sure, but I digest. Um, don't I think, don't say that. Uh, no, nah, I think I'm I'm I think he's done. I think he's done, and that's fine. But I think uh, the thing about the thing that's really interesting to me about like where this virtual space goes is once people can get back to going out places, right, and going to you know the bar, or whatever. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, if people would like what I would what I would be really interested to see if, if it happens is like the same way you can watch that fight like a pay-per-view you can go to a bar and watch that fight can you go to a bar and watch you know I don't want to go to the concert but mm-hmm. you know I want to see I want to I want to get part of that experience you know and maybe bars and whatever restaurants clubs or whatever can stream that type of thing it'd yeah. be really interesting to see that because artists in Vegas artists will have residency and they'll do the same show, you know what I mean, at for whoever whoever might be there. So it'll be interesting to see if there's spaces created, you know what I mean, around the around these virtual concepts where artists can be in multiple places at once, um, in addition to doing a live show. Really, that's dope. That's dope because it'll be like residencies, but on a virtual place. Like you have um, knowledge, right? Knowledge charges on Bandcamp like six dollars to watch them just to watch him just mix music for an hour. Like you pay six bucks and you just go in and he's in his studio just mixing shit, talking to people. Um, so I, I guess we're already moving into into that avenue, virtual virtual residencies. Yeah, That's, yeah. Imagine so. at your local like coffee shop, right? You know, it makes sense for like smaller artists like that too. Like, I don't know, knowledge is a great example, but like 
producers as well. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? If uh, at your local coffee shop, there's a producer, they have a contract with a certain producer and you're getting them just there, all of their experimental stuff. That'd be really cool. Yeah. I would, I would mess with that. No, but I like, that. I like what- Somebody need to cut a check for these ideas. I, I love what Triller is doing with it, dude. If, um, you know, they're, 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 they're pushing, they're pushing where the, the threshold for virtual entertainment can be. Um, clearly they've hit something with these Logan brothers. Um, it, I, I did not know that they were this big of a deal until I watched this fight. If I'm being honest, I, I knew that they were big, but like for them, for Triller to throw this much cash behind them, that means these boys are bringing in a bag, a bag. So it's, it's just interesting that that is, uh, another space of, of the internet that exists and is growing. Yeah. And we all over that. I think a big part of that is fights. You know what I mean? I think the big part of that is it don't even really matter if they're professional fighters. I think we've seen that people just love to watch people duke it out. Um, and as much as part of me feels like, you know, uh, apoc- not apocalyptic, but like Orwellian about us moving to a space where celebrity death matches are number one rated show. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? I think, I think that, yeah, I think that that is a huge space. It creates a lot of opportunity for the MMA, um, for UFC. And so yeah. I, I appreciate that we're, that we're all over that. We will continue to commentate whether it's, you know, the Logans, whether it's uh, Kamar Usman or whether it's Godzilla versus King Kong. We got y'all held down on that. You guys are held down. Hey, man, well, Snowfall? Man. They, they a- caught it. They caught it. They caught it. There was, there was a few episodes in the beginning of the season where I thought they were going to drop it, but they caught it. Yeah. It, it was uh, the, a lot of buildup for a pay for it that that did pay off it was a shaky buildup that's starting that's starting to pay off uh there are still a couple of scenes in it where i was like mm, we could have stretched this out a little bit more but it's it's starting to pay off they're they're, they're bringing this season together well with the characterization so initial thoughts yeah initially just watching it i was like i love how much uh First of all, I love the way they're creating Franklin as like one of those guys. You know what I mean? It takes a lot of character building to try and create a character that is memorable as a, the boss of an organization. Whether yeah. that's a Don Draper like figure in a Mad Men type show, whether that's a Godfather figure in something more traditionally gangster, you know, whether that's a Walter White, it takes a lot to put into the character to build up that presence of that character and what they've done with Franklin and Peaches. Peaches get the car is becoming a staple. Franklin's uh, outbursts, you know what I mean? When he when he's trying to let everybody know that he's been, he's gonna keep handling it, like he's been handling it. Yeah. Uh, and that cane, man, they slowly are adding little things that that make him, you know, the menacing figure that that will last in our minds. So when he came, he came around the corner on old girl, when she yeah. thought she was playing him on the phone, and you just see that cane, yeah, you already know what's going on, man. Nah, it's uh, it's fly, it's fly. They're taking it into a. It, it's still very exciting. I thought they were gonna get real sappy with it, but very quickly, uh, switch switch the game up a little bit. They got rid of they got rid of man boy. They got rid of man boy. What a great great character, and that dude is from Vine. What did you think of his death? I thought it was I thought it was dope. Shot him in the neck. Yeah, the way he keeps talking, no matter what, no matter they they don't shot him up, and he's still, still you know. He, and did you do you think he was right when he looks at Franklin? And he says these guys gonna turn on you. They are gonna leave you. you yeah, hundred I mean? so? percent. That's that's where that's going to. It's that's every gangster story. It ends up becoming if. Every gangster story, if you're successful as a gangster, then your team is going to turn on you. Yeah. You can, what are you going to do? Your success take a shot at you. What are you going to do? You're going to become unsuccessful? You see? You see? You be successful and you have enemies. You can have friends. <laughs> that's, that's real, though. That's real. And so, it's, 
I, I just, I just like where it's gone. It's as you're saying, the character development with Franklin adding the K now, making him, uh, giving him staple, staple items that you can recognize him as. You know, Walter White is the bald head and the yellow tracksuit, uh, or it's the, you know, the the the, the teacher getup with the Godfather is the cat with the with the suit. You know, in Training Day, it's Training Day. You know, it's Denzel. <laughs> Denzel, dude. It's Denzel. The so when I when I say like yeah, so there's I mean there's a lot of things to like about it. There's there's certain there's certain things that I feel like they're they have the idea and they're rushing it. So like Louis getting shot at the funeral, that felt that I like I could read that like a telegraph pass. You know what I mean? Yeah. It seemed rushed. You know, she has the conversation right before with Jerome. He's like, "You always stay in your place and safe." Then she come, you see the girls in the car. She comes outside. It's like, you already know what's going to happen. A lot of the tension yeah. is removed from that scene. I think maybe that's just my experience watching it. I think I said that a couple episodes ago where I saw the cart with the Breaking Bad shot, and I was like, murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's murder. It's murder. <laughs> and murder so, yeah, she wrote. Yeah, big facts, big facts. So she's done, did, oh man, Khadija's out too. Khadija's Took her out. out this episode. That's a, that was a great, that was a great supporting character for a while. Just building her, 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 her lunacy throughout the whole thing. Having her stab a uh, fat back, just, just going in. Man. Oh, terrible. That's a, That's that was a dark scene. Just watching her just stab this dude. Yeah, but to your point, like she brought so much emotion to the to all of these scenarios as a mother who's lost her daughter to this violence that's as a result of these drugs. Like, man, you know, she she really she really she really uh she scared me, you know what I mean? Watching it, yeah. I'm like, man, I would not want to run into this lady. I'm like, somebody needs to and it's crazy when you're invested in a character, you're like, man, I wish somebody would take her out because she is yeah. <laughs> dangerous, she's a loose cannon, you know. Uh <laughs> So man, yeah, they 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 wrapping up a lot of things. They're doing it. They're doing it really well. Um, if you had to, I know we haven't seen that. We got one episode left, right, of this season. Yes, yes, yes. Dropping tonight. Yeah. Uh, what? What? How would you? How would you rank this season? Uh, you know, out of the, you can rank it against the past seasons. You know what I mean? In terms of this show, how do you think they're they're doing it? Pre having seen the finale, finale. It's action packed. It's action packed. It was a little the first season I think slaps. It, it's 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 stabling itself out. There's nothing that step it doesn't step out. It doesn't stand out yet, but it's kind of leveling leveling itself out. Yeah, I agree. I think season three was really good. Like yeah. I think I think the end of season two and season three are really good. Um and I think this season is uh there are certain, like I said, there are certain parts that feel rushed. The fact that his brother died off screen and we never even saw him, you know, that might be a production issue or whatever, but uh, I would yeah. agree. I would I would say that it's gotten even better. It's gotten a lot. There are a lot of things that I really like about it in terms of the stakes, in terms of the characters, the new angle with the media potentially leaking the CIA drug connection yeah. has been a good addition. Um, I would say the reason that it's the same and I don't rank it higher is because of those little strange pockets where it just seems like there's little stuff that's rushed but yeah. nitpicks at a show that i love a lot uh and i think i nitpick it because i do want it to be considered with breaking bad with you know all of these uh these classic shows the sopranos yeah it has the potential it's, that much we know it does it, it does. has the potential check check out snowfall check out snowfall i don't think we're, i think we don't set up a, a hot pipe of content what would you say a hot nah, type say of content. So that's not a. That's not a saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Don't ever tell me you've got a hot pipe of anything. Listen, <laughs> listen. Uh, this is a peace pipe. But uh, man, just before we take off today, like I just think it's important to be to be grateful. Um, again, again, again. Thank you to anybody that's listening. Thank you to you, sir. In this space um thank you for giving me the space to do stuff like the land acknowledgement i know we haven't done that in a minute but you know 
I'm, I'm honored to be creating content in the land that was, you know, cared for by the Potawatomi people, the Council of the Three Fires. Uh, this is this is Chicago, and, and I love this city, um, but the state we find it in, rest in peace to Adam Toledo, is inseparable uh, from the state that, from, from the violence that, that took Native Americans from this land, forced them off this land. Um, and so we lift up their name, uh, we lift up love for between black and brown people the world over, for black and brown people the world over, man, everybody that is hurting, feeling confused, feeling unsafe, uh, and it's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's love always to black folks, but the, uh, the Asian community right now, you know what I mean? The mm -hmm. trans community right now, anybody that feels unsafe, we, we got love for y'all, man. Um, so this is us. I don't know, maybe me being a little too dramatic about a two week break, but I, I love this. I love what I do. I love, I love speaking, um, with my brother and to y'all. And so from the heart, I, I, I hope that y'all are, are safe and that y'all hug somebody you love and eat something delicious and uh, are ready to rock with us after a, a couple improvements and a brief intermission. Yeah. yeah. Anything else for the people? Nah, man. Nah, it, it is what it is. Spin the block. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Going on the stove. Like that style. <laughs> Need some milk. Like that style. Hey, man. Nah, but we'll holla at y'all, man. We'll holla at y'all. Y'all know what it is. It's a celebration of celebration. Celebration of celebration. Cele mm -hmm. We celebration of life. We are celebration of being black. Don't it feel good to be black? Favorite thing in the world, baby. Man, we are. We love celebrating y'all. Uh, and uh, until next time, y'all, take care of yourselves. Peace, love, water. We gone. Cool. Cool. In the bed.